Our next panel is going to focus on rendering black hair. Black hair is more than just hair on a body. It is a living art form, and it's a massive part of the creative entertainment space. So why does there appear to be a lack of authentic representation of black hair in games? This panel is going to break down the good, the bad, the ugly of rendering coily hair within games. Embrace yourselves. By the end of this, you are going to forge a path forwards towards, and I quote, laid edges in clean hairlines. My name is Lauren Brown, and this is the Rendering Black Hair panel uh, with my wonderful, wonderful guests as well. Uh, let's go into it and have a wonderful conversation about what it is like to uh, be a Black person who works in games, who witnesses games, who plays games, and when we don't see our hair represented uh, in the industry and how we're moving forward to make it better. So um, let's start by introducing our wonderful panelists. Let's start with uh, Ebonics. You wanna go first? Sure. Um, hello everyone. My name is Danielle, um, but everyone knows me by Ebonics. Uh, I am a full-time content creator, a 3D artist and presenter, host, speaker. Or oh, I, I have, many hats <laughs> but one of my most important hats is making sure that we are best represented in games and in the gaming industry that's awesome and jeffrey what about you um i unfortunately am a constant overthinker and thus i write as a living um to deal with that a dichotomy <laughs> no i'm kidding um but i i am a games journalist so um you will find my work on gamesindustry.biz um, I also do write about, you know, blackness and gaming and how weird that can be, as Lauren has pointed out. And also, um, I am a um, author and a writer, um, so I'm always thinking about um, fly things that black people are doing and um, how cool that is. Awesome. And uh, my name is Lauren Brown. I am an art director and illustrator in the game industry. Uh, I am a uh, a game dev and animator with uh, you know 11 years of experience in the industry and throughout my journey uh, as a game dev have been trying to uh, do my best to advocate for uh, people of color and black people in the gaming industry um, in terms of representing them in our games as well as getting them into our studios so that we have a diverse set of talents uh, you know informing the decisions and making the games that uh, we all experience and um, a part of my advocacy work has been trying to make sure that uh, studios and game devs can pay attention to rendering different hair textures and using um, you know, hair grading scales and uh, different rule sets to make sure that everybody is equally represented and character creators and then just the characters that we create. Uh, so that is our panel uh, and thank you everybody for joining us. So um, let's get started. So I guess the first question is uh, just like, um, you know, a more in-depth introduction uh, of you, you guys as gamers. Um, what games uh, do you love to play? Like, what are your favorite games of all time? Let's start there. And let's start with um, like Jeffrey. Ooh. Um, I know that's a hard what's, question. What's funny, well, yes and no. Um, what's funny is that question the answer to that question has been changing over the years, given recent, I've been, I've been more thoughtful about how we're presented in games and looking back as what was available, you know, when we were like, you know, in school to now, um, it, it's so vastly different because now there is more blackness um, that can be seen. It may not be perfect, but it's noticeable. So the answer to that question, I would say, kind of falls somewhere in between Pokemon Sword and Shield and Neo 2 from um, Koei Techno because both those games, just to be really, really short, um, both those games, you, you know, in one, you can make someone that looks like yourself. The other, you see black and brown folks who look like your neighbors and it's like, oh, your gym leads and stuff like, that's cool. Shout out to Nessa and Pokemon. I don't care what you say. That's my favorite. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Um, I agree with you. Shout out to Nessa. She's awesome. Um, all right. And what about you, Ivanix? Um, I feel like this is 
a well-known answer but everyone knows that for me it's been the sims the sims has been rocking with me since i've had i think i got my first pc built specifically so that i could play sims and every kind of system that i've had growing up has been made specifically to now handle the mods that i play with with the sims um (laughs) and yeah like I mean definitely when I when I reflect on my earlier days of playing The Sims I recognized as I was older that I didn't always used to make uh, black sims because there was no like real content available for them and I used to just make either like Latina or um, maybe just brown families to be honest Um, but never really black because again the content was available but I like the I like the storytelling element of the game I like the character creation element of the game and then when it evolved into like The Sims 3 and then The Sims 4 you know the options still few and far between but again for me it was definitely about the kind of creating um, storylines for these little people that I could control and it was always it used to always just be hey let's fall in love hey let's have a baby well then it turned into it I'm gonna give you a full flesh life and develop you into the whole character that I needed you to be and um yeah and then obviously I then made it my own which is like well this isn't enough and then started making my own content for the sims because again seeing myself and seeing other people that looked like me was really important and so it then became I kept, became a bit obsessed but then it became my life and it had since then opened doors that I never really imagined would have ever opened and have actually been able to work with The Sims and I'm in the credits of The Sims which is now really dope. That's awesome and yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, congratulations on being in the credits that's fantastic. Thank it's you. Everything coming full circle. Um, Absolutely. You totally deserve to. Um, Thank you. Yeah and I think for my end it's funny because a lot of the games that are some of my favorite games are ones that don't really represent human characters or characters that look like uh, any kind of person. So, uh, you know, Journey is one of my favorite games, Hollow Knight, um, you know, games like that where the representation of the character is just kind of like, you can very easily project yourself onto it. Yeah, um, I'm yeah. also a huge fan of the Pokemon franchise too. And like when I finally got the chance to make a character that, you know, had darker skin, I was just like, what? That's crazy. Because yeah. I've been playing Pokemon since I was like 10 years old um original red and blue and then yeah. went on to basically every uh one in the franchise but i realized that um you know just like thinking about the catalog of games that i love so much they're all characters that are easily projected onto rather than uh, a representation of myself and i think that you know even still the games that i like to play i don't really get to create characters that look like me and so um i'm very used to as a gamer having to uh put myself in another kind of like you know uh, character's shoes and that's just a normal part of gaming but also um we're just so used to not really seeing ourselves that it was like a second nature thought of uh, you know just having a facsimile rather than a character that looks like me um and so you know I want to try to work to change that but um Omar to the next question uh your journeys uh, have both been very interesting in the game industry and I've been following both of you for a long time what started this journey for you and just becoming uh, a key part of the industry in terms of this representation? Like what was the first uh, thing that start, that really got you thinking about uh, what our representation looked like in this industry? I've been seeking. Oops. I was going to say, I'll go second. I'll go second. Okay. Uh, uh, Danielle. Yeah. No, I mean, genu- genuinely it, I, it fell onto my lap. I was waiting for knee surgery and was going on like a little Sims binge. And um, again, going back into like my storyline bag, I was really quite heavily motivated to start making like, I was like, no, now's my time. I'm I'm ready to, for us to have black stories and couldn't make the black stories because there wasn't the content available for um, me to make those stories because there wasn't content available for us, whether it was in game or within the modern community. Um, and so essentially what kick-started my desire to fill the gap that was missing in the game was purely out of frustration from the lack of content and um, in a way just taught myself how to kind of use the photoshop tools to make so stereotypical but to make a dashiki just it was just so random I was just like, okay I'm gonna make a dashiki because it's not in the game and it's what I wanted for a character 
um and then that just kind of escalated into okay well what else can I do and I mean my background also is like psychology and social care and so all of everything that I've learned is got nothing to do with what I spent years in university for um but essentially taught myself how to then 3D model because I wanted to see more black hair in the game because again very lackluster non-existent and shaped like cauliflower <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> And um, so, yeah, so I kind of, I told myself, I just, I wanted to put a pair of braids in the game and then just put that out to the community because it was just essentially what was missing. And the rest is pretty much history, just out of frustration. Um, I saw something that I really needed in order to see us better represented in the game and have since now wanted to, not just in The Sims, but kind of across gaming in a whole to work with kind of exactly what you're doing Lauren like working with studios or making sure that there's better representation in their game and kind of where we're coming where we've come from to where we're going and how you know it's okay to like I've said this to a studio it's okay to be like okay we've messed up um here's how we're going to do better to make sure that we have better representation because I think people are scared sometimes to admit that they've kind of failed their you know black players and I think it takes a lot to really kind of take ownership of and like knowing that they haven't done the best work that they could have done to best to best represent us in the game but here's how we can work on making it better um so yeah so just kind of frustration and anger and just like mm, I want to see us in the game and <laughs> <laughs> wanting to see that change Super yeah relatable. um yeah I totally relate with all that uh for myself I would also say that it came out of frustration but really um I'm a big observer, so ever since I was young, I always found it odd that the place where we tend to, you know, belong would be, you know, sports games, fighting games. And I'm like, okay, well, that kind of makes sense because these are representations of things that have people from different parts of the world or, you know, different nationalities, what have you. So that kind of makes sense. But then it got to a point where... Um, you know, you just uh, ha had to ask yourself, why is it that we're like a second or third character in something? And, you know, I, I just kept asking that question. I always kept wondering about that. And I always kept wondering about the voices who speak about that. Um, when, when you asked the question about what really made me think about it, um, I think of the time when I, I bring this up because that was like a flashpoint for me when Resident Evil 5 came out and there was that trailer and it this was something that sparked like academic papers and conversations amongst ourselves and like you know the industry at that time and it was very bizarre you know at that point right and I thought why is bringing this up uncomfortable for y'all to admit but the problem with that is that didn't stop happening and it still hasn't stopped happening <laughs> right um and i would say that um in the last few years i've 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 gone to a point where i know i'm not tripping because all the other homies are talking about the same thing too and i'm having the same conversations with people across different chat groups but why is that so you know when when you can compile like a rolodex of games that drop the ball on like why is it that none of the people look at the people on this panel you have a problem that's systemic, right? So I just started to talk about that. I felt more empowered. And I'm like, well, I'm just like going to the paint. Like, I don't know if, if you read my, my article about like character creators, that was just one example of me just, I don't really care. I'm gonna just write about this. And it was chef kiss, babes. It was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Because, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I, I didn't know um, at that time that, all those words <laughs> meant a lot to people, but long story short, that, that kept on happening. I kept making that a thing. And then I just decided there was a point where I asked myself, well, it's really weird that someone like ourselves, we're, we're not, more of us aren't at major publications. I'm not saying that you just have to be a game journalist to do this kind of thing. But, you know, I just asked myself, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm go ahead and do this. And, you know, now I'm working for a major publication to speak about things, including that. So, yeah, that's what got me here, mainly just frustrations and, you know, my community, my my community um, and people just 
reinforcing that. No, I'm not going out of my mind. When, when we speak about these things, when you speak about these things of yourself not being there, it's not you complaining. It's you just asking for recogni recognition of your personhood. That's that it. Part. Absolutely. Yeah. Asking questions that need to be answered. Like, hello, well, what's good? Why are we right. always just in sports? Or why are we always just like henchmen or always like low income households? Like, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And oh, yeah. Um, one more thing I wanted to add to it. Uh, uh, that's not probably something we'll really get deep, but there's also this thing too is that we're also mainly there in shooters as well. And I also think that's kind of weird yeah. in a way. You know, yeah, like, I can understand for like things like like Fortnite and what have you to a degree, but it's just like, oh, there's a shooter. Of course, we're gonna be there. Yeah, like yeah. I don't want that. Like you know, that representation is important because we need to see ourselves in roles and positions that are not just uh, sports related or violence related or gang related or you know, et cetera. Like all these stereotypical kinds of uh, ways to see ourselves. And a lot of people will think that it's something that doesn't really matter. They're like, oh, like, why are you complaining? This is just a video game. It's like, what people don't realize is that that kind of immersion really does shape your worldview over time, especially when you grew up with it. And so being able to see characters who look like us doing things that are fantastical and adventurous and, um, you know, incredible. And also, you know, sometimes we can be uh, the villain or sometimes we can be uh, you know, like in the shooter as well, but it's the, it's the it's the range of roles that we have been missing from the industry, and I think that um, having our voices in that conversation is what was exactly needed because nobody was really thinking about it before our voices were really lent to the conversation, and we were always talking about it, but it took a while for you know people to actually catch on to that conversation happening, and unfortunately, people usually catch on to the conversation only when uh, there's a protest or when there's a huge event that happens in the community. Um, and so I really want people to start to pay attention to us, not just when we're in pain, but all the time, um, because, you know, we want that, equal, you know, that kind of representation. And we want also people informing these decisions who look like us. And, and outside of Black History Month, I'm sorry. Exactly. Okay. Outside, and outside of Black History Month. Yes now outside of Juneteenth, because now that everybody's learned about Juneteenth, you know, like in the mainstream uh, zeitgeist, uh, people are like, oh, I guess we should think about Black people in this time too. It's like, no, think about us all the time. We're not just relevant during a month or during a day. Um, right. So, you know, like we're always relevant. And so I think what really got me thinking about it, um, you know, thinking about really advocating for this and uh, working towards better representation was actually like when I really got into the game industry uh, in animation, I was also make, trying to make sure that, you know, I wanted to draw black, like dark, like dark skin characters, like darker than me. And um, I wanted to, you know, have characters that had, uh, you know, kinky hair, uh, you know, 4C hair. And I would always get pushback when I was in animation. And I started getting pushback in game development as well. And um, once I started to become a leader in the game industry, uh, I realized that there were so many concept artists who were drawing from very uh, kind of like the same types of references when they were going to render black characters. And those references were mainly celebrities and uh, you know models and people who are you know kind of like the beauty standard of the Western beauty standard, mm. which is to say that a lot mm. of their features have been um, you know a lot more along the, the lines of Caucasian features, even if they're black, because that's what you know this, this you know the society deems beautiful, unfortunately, even though that's mm. not true. And that's often what we would see in the characters that would come forward is that even when there's black characters, they often have very watered down features that are, uh, you know, more along the lines of Caucasian beauty standards. And so I had to go into the room and say, hey, like, actually, let's start looking at, you know, models are real people and actors are real people. Yes. But let's start looking at everybody, not just these people who have been, you know, put forward as the standard, but everybody. And people I started see at a grocery store. Yeah, people that you see in the grocery store, people that you see in the see world. Yeah, they can be, you know, you know, they can be beautiful. If you need them to be beautiful, fine. Like it's a game, it's idealized, sure. But still, like, don't hide these features just because that's what you see on your Google search, your rudimentary Google search. And uh, and so I realized that there was several, many concept artists who would kind of use that as reference. And looking around on art station, I would see a lot of that, uh, you know, kind of like lack of representation in oh my God. You know, like, with our textured hair either so yeah <laughs> I'm so sorry because I'm so traumatized 
by going on like CG Trader and Turbo Squid and like trying to look up black characters or black hair. And it's just pure caricatures or you literally search black hair and then you'll set you go like five six pages deep and not a single black character has popped up and you're just like oh, like <laughs> just the tears start yeah. falling that <laughs> emotional oh. damage like it's so painful so yeah sorry I just I had a flashback oh, so, oh yeah. my god <laughs> yeah don't apologize no seriously because like I think the I think the breaking point for me was um I had asked one of our outsourcing vendors to uh, give uh, one of the characters, uh, the black characters, locks. And, um, you know, I gave reference and everything. I made sure I had images. Um, some of them were of my own locks. And uh, they did, you know, they had done braids instead of locks. And I was just like, okay, like, listen, I get it. These are not the same hairstyles, though. This is a completely different process. And I was like, hey, make sure that these are locks. And my art director at the time was like, well, why does it even matter? Like, why? Like, it's, you know, it. And I was just like, <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I can't imagine the look on your face. There, this is a professional um, thing, but... Yeah, I <laughs> very professional, but I was just like, listen, it does matter because this is a completely different hairstyle, different process, different walk of life, different protectiveness. Like, it's this different. And it's important right. because, again, it's so misrepresented all the time. And this is exactly the reason why it has been because people just don't think it's important enough. So what I wanted to ask y'all was, why do you think it is important to render black characters and black hair correctly? Uh, do you want to go, Jeffrey? I'll go second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, oh, there's, I, I think there's just so many, uh, there's an unlimited amount of reasons that the imp- like the why the importance of rendering black hair is so important um I guess starting off it's just the seeing yourself in the game I don't know if you've like when you when you load up a game and you're given a character creation engine and then you you immediately go to the options where you know that you're going to see yourself or that you want that you want to see yourself and then when you find a game that has such a ama- it's it's like you immediately you feel seen and I think that the element of feeling like seen and like that you can play the character that you want to play um, as yourself or like you're emulating yourself into the game. And we haven't had that in how many, like years, decades. Um, I think I resonate so strongly with that again, because of not being able to make um, black characters back in the day and then not kind of having that self-love within myself because I was like well if I'm not seen in the game then how am I supposed to really like if that means that the beauty standards for me are just non-existent and I think for like the kids like essentially one of the hairstyles that I've made um for the sims was um from a request from a community member who wanted her niece's hairstyle so that her niece could make black sims because her niece never made black sims and I think from that hairstyle she was able to completely see the beauty not just within the game but within herself and I think there's but there's such a connection between how we see ourselves um and how that's projected in the game and it I feel like I'm 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 just babbling, but I, I resonate so strongly with just being able to load up a game and not struggle with the two or three options that we have, which is like an afro, um, the the cornrows going back, and mm-hmm. then locks with no definition. Yep. Um, and there's just sheer disappointment when you just definitely see that those, those are the only options. And then let's not forget the ash, <laughs> the ashy skin tones. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Get that baby some lotion, please. Seriously. <laughs> they just leave us ashy out in these streets. And it's just sheer and utter disappointment. And so I think that being able to see ourselves in out, outside of like being from like the hood or the ghetto or like all of the stereotypes, which then, you know, it we we've taken this information if we're seeing it represented in that kind of media then we're just going to take on as like well this is is this what is this who we are is this who we represent and it's not it's not because we come in all shapes sizes colors shades we have all different types of hairstyles and we deserve to be able to see ourselves in the in the media that we 
that uh, uh, as a percentage more of us use which is actually quite crazy but we're not it, it's not represented like that yeah that was so beautifully said i'm sorry lauren you were going to say something no i was just co-signing go on oh, um <laughs> That was so beautifully said. I don't know if I'm going to say something as eloquent. Um, for me... Definitely rambling, but thank you. No. <laughs> you weren't rambling. You were speaking the uh, truth, for sure. Yes. Um, for myself, um, I, I've come to understand that living in a Black and brown neighborhood um, is it, it, something of a privilege. I didn't realize that because I had a conversation with someone because the thing is, not not all of us have um, those living conditions. And it, it's not really indictment of like, whether or not you're a good or bad person, it's just how things are, right? And um, one of the things I take great pleasure in is just like going to the store and seeing all these people with hairstyles like ourselves, um, long flowing locks, braids, different kind of fades, um, curly afros and what have you and I I love the fact that in any given week I can literally see the gamut of like black hair history you know um I think that's something that's just so powerful um so for me um hair is a part of blackness that's who we are it's art it's our identity so I I too when I go to a character creator um <laughs> I immediately go to the hair um and I pray that those choices are available. Like I pray, right? I pray. I let you get my hands and knees before I even load up. Like, please, God. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I know y'all seen that um um that video from um RDC World where they're like, what black hair is like <laughs> when you're looking for black hair when you're a black person. Oh. Yeah, that's what experiences is like, like truly, yeah. you know. Um and for myself, like, honestly, it, it, it's just, like I said, an extension of our personhood, you know, um, if your game has, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this until like, I'm, I'm old and in a rocking chair, you know, if your world has all these things going on, like you have some elaborate political system, you have all these monsters, magic system, dragons, all this stuff, X, Y, Z, what have you, but like the people in the game do not look like actual people from like, multiple regions you know that that to me that's so bizarre that it's such a bizarre thing you know um people think like oh well black hair is, is like you know an option if you don't like it take no it, it's literally erasure that's what it is because Absolutely. we haven't been put in positions of power and i would still argue where that is right right now but need to say that's a whole different conversation but yeah it it, it there is no reason. And I also think of this from a standpoint, because one day I would like to be a parent and it would be very bizarre for me to speak to my child who has this great hair. Why can't I have this hair in, uh, in Pokemon, which is a game that's also struggling to get there. I don't know, yeah. baby. Yeah. I feel like, <laughs> do, you know what? I feel, do you feel like there's been an issue of like black hair being perceived as like too hard to make or am I am I tripping on that because I've definitely heard it in oh that's my studio or another and it's like oh you know, yeah please so you're yeah it. Lauren you're the expert yeah Can yeah speak yeah I mean, that was my next question but at first I'm going to answer uh the other question of yeah. like why it's important in my own life because like I I also have had a lot of thoughts about this topic but um just like in our history uh as a fundamental part of our culture um, you, you just for you're just saying about erasure it's like that has been you know something that has that society has been trying to erase from us and only now uh, you know recently in the last like I think 20 years really uh, have we really been starting to embrace it and reclaim it I know that obviously like 70s uh, 80s we also had like you know those big afros and everything which was wonderful but that's not the only hairstyle that exists and around like you know the 90s you know a lot of people started to perm their hair to assimilate and to damage our texture and to just like ruin our the, the natural beauty that we have of how our hair grows out of our scalp even to, you know even now um there's so many people who have been discriminated against who have been uh, made to cut their hair off in order to participate in events or to be uh you know in a certain job and it's just it's so messed up because it's literally um but like, that's like oppression at its finest right there where we are literally stripped of something that is so fundamental and natural and beautiful to us 
uh, that we can't have our own identity. And something, you know, like representing our hair correctly in games is like a way to reclaim that identity and to really bring it back to know that people out there are looking at us critically and being like, oh, like this hair is beautiful. We also want to make sure that we dedicate the resources and time to get this right, just like we do with all of our other characters' hair. And you can definitely dedicate those resources. I'm going to slide right into that next question um, because, Crazy. you know, we've seen many yeah, we've seen many examples of character, you know, white characters or, you know, uh, characters with straight hair, 1C, 2, you know, uh, sorry, 1A, 2A hair, um, where, you know, it looks beautiful in the engine. They spent, I think, two years on Aloy's hair from Horizon Zero Dawn, so they, they had the capacity to do so. And if you really want to put the effort in, you can. And it also doesn't take two years, uh, you know, to render our hair as well if you want to do it meaningfully. Um, and also there's a lot of creative ways to do it too. Like you don't have to make it super realistic if your game is not super realistic. Um, I've seen many examples of art, many examples of other games that have done it well and in a stylized way, in a realistic way, in um, a very simple way. Um, Cause it's not like they've done it right because it's not just uh, rendering it correctly but it's also creativity and styling because naturally like we're very innovative creative people and yeah. we you know we style our hair in a myriad of different ways I can do you know Sailor Moon space buns I can do like you know like the you know the, the high like nouveau Victorian thing I can do my hair in braids or crinkly locks like there's infinite ways to style just my hair in this style um, you know, think about what people can do with their natural hair, uh, you know, blow out or uh, wavy or twisted or just there's so many different styles. And like we haven't seen again, like just like uh, Danielle was saying, the fact that we always see is cornrows, uh, you know, maybe some locks and an afro. Um, we have been it's it's been so limited and there's just a lack of creativity as well as a lack of effort and time given to the rendering of the hair. Um, and so, you know. From my experience in the game industry, I know that, yeah, like sometimes it is complicated, especially if you want to render it correctly, but people are innovative all the time with so many things in the game industry. And I think it's just a matter of spending the time and effort to do it and getting, you know, basically having the allowance to have that time and effort to do it right. Because it probably would only take really like, I think two months to get like a really solid, like main character hairstyle. Maybe I'm underestimating. It could be more than that. You can spend infinite time rendering anything. But um, I think that, you know, it's really just a matter of the effort that is spent and how serious people take it in the industry. I think the more serious people can start taking it, the better results that we see, uh, because there's been many results that have been done well. And there was an analysis video about this where uh, the Miles Morales Spider-Man, um, you know, was a character that was examined as a character that had really, you know, an awesome fate, like just a really good example of you know, PS5 graphics really rendering that fake correctly. And they broke down how they did it. And it was creative and innovative, but, uh, you know, it ultimately worked really well. And it, it proves that these systems can work to show our hair beautifully and correctly. And I would love to see more games start to do that. So, um, you know, that's just been my kind of like experience with it. But um, if y'all want to say a piece to that as well, uh, please do. Um. I think about something one of my mentors said. Um, she says something to the effect of something's only difficult when you allow it to be. Um, and mm -hmm. what, what she was hinting at was that if you keep on ignoring something, it's going to develop into a problem. So every time we see or hear or read anything about, you know, rendering our hair is difficult. Um, like there, there was even a... Um, I think I saw a tweet today. It's, it's a skill issue. You're missing yeah. that skill because you are ignoring it. Black people all over the globe, like, I'm sorry, try again. Okay. Eh. <laughs> Seriously. Literally. See, we're not just in the US. We're not just in the Caribbean. We're not just in um, UK. You can find us anywhere and everywhere. So again, nice try. Um, but mm -hmm. the serious answer to that that I would like to say is that there are so many individuals who have gone and said, it's like, okay, you say that this is a problem. I literally have a collection in engines and stuff like that. I can do this right now. Yep. So what's the excuse now? That, that's my answer to that. Mm -hmm. There is no excuse, like at all. And literally speaking as someone who is self-taught and just taught myself how to make black hair <laughs> out of nowhere, just because it was missing. 
like again I have a psychology I am still paying a student loans on a psychology degree <laughs> but I am steady here making black hair because I was I was out of my I was out of my witch trying to find the best representation in the game that I wanted to play and see myself in so as someone who is self-taught I don't feel like there's an excuse for any triple a studio to produce and release a game that has kind of a lack of content for their black or minor minority player base um and again I think exactly what Jeffrey said it's a lack of skill and or a lack of intent or a lack of like motivation or want or desire to actually take the time to learn how to effectively render our hair correctly and it's not impossible it's very much doable and again it doesn't have to, if it's not super stylized I think it's even easier to do it if it's not like hyper stylized and then the, even then where's the excuse what is the excuse then there should be none right. I yeah, think about um, oops, sorry, I, I wanted to add one point, like, I, I think about, and I know you both have seen this too, when, um, when Elden Ring came out, um, that tweet is deleted, but I would have had it a part of the presentation, but the person's like, Black characters in Elden Ring be like, and it's just like, Black folks in wigs, right? <laughs> and, um, which, which is fine, because, you know, we look great in wigs, but my, my, my thing is that, when I um, start up your game and I look and I look like Tyler, the creator off the Igor album, that's just, come on, 2022, oh no, you know what I'm saying? Seriously. No, and if you, seriously. if you don't understand that reference, that's the whole point of this whole EXO. And I need you to watch all of it if you didn't understand that reference. Okay. And we're not going to explain it, <laughs> but it, 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 no, but, 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 but honestly, it, it, it is just so bizarre. And one of my friends is like, it's a fun game, but I'm 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 gonna tell you right now, <laughs> you just look like this. I'm just like, I'm okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shambles. Yeah. It's the shambles. And it's it's so uh it is that's another frustrating thing. Like if they haven't given us like the worst extreme features, they then or they just completely don't even bother with our features and they, they give us a range of skin tones, but for a Eurocentric face. Yes. And so it's just like, hey, we're not gonna risk getting it wrong so we're just going to completely erase how you're supposed to look and give you a bunch of skin tones that you know at least you have some kind of representation but then still no hair <laughs> you're gonna get the straight bob <laughs> yeah many people say this too where they were just like oh i didn't really want oh oh no, Ren, we might have lost you babes lauren we see you staring to the space looking at Elden Ring right now (laughs) in disgust (laughs) yeah I was just like oh no I am not I'm not I'm not I'm not even gonna give it the time yeah it's I was just like nah I'm good I I played enough Euro fantasy land where black people don't exist (laughs) it was tragic tragic the slagging off Elden Ring. Yeah. yeah. No, no, really. It's like, yeah, that's cool. I, I just can't play. I, I was I was gonna say this, but it's like I just can't play anything where I don't see us now. Mm-hmm. Like I'm too old for that. It's like Yeah. No, seriously, I'm I'm kind of the same. If 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 it's got a character creation engine and mm. we are not represented the way we need to be represented, they can they can keep that. Yeah. They can hold that big man. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree. I don't like to play any games that don't have um, uh, a good representation of Black characters because mm-hmm. not only do I see a lot of um, bad representation of our hair, but also just like we were saying before, like that ashy, that skin. Ugh. Like mm. there are Maybe. so many ways to light dark skin correctly and it's been so underutilized. Like I cannot tell you how many character creators I have seen where all the features are completely washed out because the lighting is just being absorbed by mm. the skin rather than being reflected. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, cause like, I think that it goes back to uh, in school, like when, you know, developers are learning how to render things, how to, um, you know, uh, properly, you know, paint things, even uh, when you're an artist, you don't get taught how to paint black characters, you know? And like, in that respect, I was also self-taught because I just taught myself how to do it. Um, but no one actually like knows how to properly treat it, how to light it, um, you know, and, and no one's teaching themselves because they aren't thinking about it. And 
so you know i really also want people to just like think about how does this actually look and does this only look bad because you just haven't practiced it and that's usually where it comes back to is that no one's practiced this craft and the skill it's just like creating any other character it's just different techniques sometimes that you have to use but those techniques are all learnable and achievable uh you're just not putting in effort and so i really want people to like really understand that they got to go that you know it's not even an extra mile it's just you just have to think just think about that for a little bit and then innovate just like you do with everything else absolutely yep it it's, it's also one of those things where i think about um black creatives in other industries where they've also been in the same positions where photographers have made sure that we're properly photographed um we're, we're properly filmed, things like that. Mm-hmm. And that information has been passed passed down and people are making sure that's a regular thing. Um, I remember um, making a comment about something. Somebody re- re- replied as a devil, devil's advocate. And my response to them to that was that that can't be an excuse anymore. Like information's at a point now where it's so... Um, readily available to anyone Mm -hmm. that that's just not not an excuse so you know why this black character looks like they haven't stepped into a barbershop or they visited a loctician is not an excuse Mm -hmm. it's just not because even even in the culture um uh, you know depending upon your relationship with your hair regardless of the fact you take care of it and it's an extension of yourself so whatever that so whether or not you have a high top or you decide to blow it out or you just decide to get a a silk press regardless of the fact it's still an extension of ourselves and this is art that we haven't stopped participating in regardless of the fact you know so again it's that that's not an excuse because that all that information is readily available and it's one of those and this goes into like one of the like things I I tend to criticize like the industry about is that why isn't there more overlap with people in other industries who know what they're doing so that's just like a regular thing because you have these people with all this knowledge that it's not really available to you yeah a word yeah I think people are definitely resorting to the same hiring practices that they have always resorted to which has made the game industry look very homogenous. And, and they always, you know, when they're interviewing me or talking to me, they're just like, oh, like, it's just so hard to find, uh, you know, black game developers or black artists or, you know, or that. and I'm just like, but we're, we've been out here though. And there's a lot of us. And I, ha- you know, I have a podcast called Painted in Color where literally we only interview uh, people of color and black people. And it was, it's actually very easy to find us out there. And we have a huge list of people who we want to interview and we want to talk to. And so there really is no excuse. Like we are out here. So to those people who would say that, oh, it's so hard to like find that or it's so hard to find those, that people who hold that knowledge, what would you say to that? Like how, like, how do you think they can find those people better if they, you know, if they think that it's so difficult? What are the Dan- methods that they can use? Danielle, take it away. I, I feel that you'd be great to answer this. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I think the one of the most important things you can do is utilize the communities that are already out there. Yep. So again, there's podcasts, there's like whole entire communities like a uh, Pock and Play or I Need Diverse Games, Black Girl Gamers. You know, there are platforms out there with, if not the people that you're looking for, know the people that you're looking for. So actually utilizing the platforms that are already out there to find the information that you're looking for, rather than saying, well, I didn't find it myself, so oh well, it's done. Like that's like number one key advice to me is utilize people who are basically shouting from the rooftops, we are here. And your excuse of not being able to find anybody for anything is invalid, null and void. So we are out here. Yeah, Yeah. that that is a great point. The other thing I think about as well is that 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 can't be an answer because I know you and I aren't using the same Internet when I go on a timeline and I see everything about like black culture just go viral. Now, obviously, that's because I make it a point for that for my timeline. But regardless of the fact, you know, I'm not seeing TikTok videos, YouTube videos, mm. IG videos of like rendering black hair art 
proper lighting, all that stuff, just regularly from people. And you're telling me that you can't find the right people? Or is it that you don't want to? Are you adhering to these old hierarchical practices? Obviously, we know what the answer to that is, but I digress. Yep. Yeah. Expand your channels, expand your reach, ex- you know, expand everything, get things, get people of color on your timeline, get black people on your timeline. Okay. Because they, we are here. We are definitely here. And we've been talking about this and posting about it and creating this for as long as we've been here and as for as forever. And so, you know, there really is no excuse. I, f- I really feel like um, people just don't want to put forth that effort to really start to innovate again. Mm-hmm. Black people have had to innovate our whole lives. We had to innovate in order to, you know, be in this community, in the society, and like, and have our voices be heard in any which way. I need some people to put some for some effort forth to do okay. a little bit of that same effort, please. Yep. And please. First, furthermore, hello, we're at a whole expo of game devs, so right. yep. <laughs> this is literally an entire expo. So I, I can't, I actually can't none of this I can't find you lot is actually processing because they're literally at an expo where you will find black game devs so So if you're out here and you're not you know part of the community and you want to get more involved in the community and you want to see more of us this is a great place to start there's tons of talent here amazing people amazing artists writers innovators uh people in the industry community builders etc we all out here and this is not the only one that exists so, you know, please continue to look for those channels and platforms and communities where we are and, you know, find that talent there because we are, we are out here and we're asking to be a part of that, you know? So um, if anybody's saying, it's like, it's so hard, it's really not. It don't, don't even start with those excuses. Find Thank us, we out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there any, um, I think uh, this is the last uh, question that I want to ask, but uh, for anybody who is in the industry and is having a hard time, uh, you know, who is part of the community, who is having a hard time getting their voices heard or getting these points across, uh, you know, in in their writing, in their art, in their uh, just creation in general, do you have any advice for him, for them about how to uh, expand their reach and get their voices heard? Mm. Tricky one, but I think just utilize utilize the platforms that are available. I think. Um, video is definitely a media that people take in um, really well at the minute and then if you can expand that into like writing fantastic Um, if you're I think if you're trying to engage a community or just trying to put your work out there short form media is fantastic right now and it does it is a way for you to kind of draw people into more of the work that you're doing so not, not to say hate to say it, but using things like you know TikTok or IG Reels and just to just to get yourself out there into into the masses, and then utilizing then like YouTube for more like in depth analysis or in depth pieces of work that you've done, or even Twitch doing it live, um, and using the utilizing the tags like the tag systems on there also, um, to help people actually find you because you know they recently. Oh, a couple of months ago added in um like the black and african-american tags that if you're looking specifically for um someone who's black and live streaming at that moment in time then you can find you can find them so um yeah definitely some short trying to find ways of doing short form media that's really catchy and um will draw people in to then um feed them into more of the work that you're creating awesome that's great advice um and jeffrey what about you um i i agree with everything that daniel said um video is a very great platform and if we're you know as we're specifically talking about art that's the best way um for people to get familiar with your work because one of the things that i think we we all can probably um agree is when you want to be found but it's hard to get a hold of you, you know what I'm saying? So you also want to make sure that you can be reached, like your email, your contacts, all that's available mm-hmm. on all, 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 A-L-L um, profiles because yes. you want to be found. So please make sure that that across like your various channels is easily found as you're sharing all these things. And also um, for me, as, as far as like writing goes, the thing about that is I, I would, um, I would like, 
to be more honest about it and say, well, you know, you, you can write about things and it'll get noticed, but that's still not the case that that has its own unique challenges that are still there. Um, what I would say is, you know, take advantage of like pitch calls when, when they're pitching for articles about certain things or whatever. Um, drop them a line. You, you, you never know. Um, and, you know, as with anything with art and a craft, you know, there's got to be days, weeks, maybe months where you're just in a funk. That's fine. You, you're, you're still a person. We're still people. We understand how like being a creative is not easy. You're, you're going to need breaks. Mm -hmm. And then you know, that not hit you, man. Yeah, you know, there there was a point where um, I'll, I'll use myself, for example, where like I was trying to work on something, even though I was still doing, you know, writing about the business side of things about games, like the other more like creative, like analytical stuff I do on my own personally, like I was just not feeling it. And that went on for nearly nine months to use myself as an example. So um yeah, just give yourself time and there's resources available to you, like like Daniel said. And um, also, it doesn't hurt to like email people, um, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes people are actually very happy for you to slide in their DMs, as long as it's like respectful and it's <laughs> actually with a reason. And they just say hi because <laughs> your, <laughs> your DM will get ignored. But actually come with that. Uh, if you if there is someone that um, one like inspires you or that you generally like kind of look up to and they do, you know, if their DMs are open or they have their email, then, you know, hitting them up and see what you know if they come back to you if, and you you know you come to them with like an, a genuine like uh like question or console or just like some looking for advice then I think utilize that as well yeah absolutely yep. don't be shy about doing that I'm mm -hmm. one of those people who love seeing emails from uh people in the industry they think okay like do you have any advice I'm like yes I do let me give you some and so um my advice to people uh trying to get their voices heard um you know as a game dev in particular um, if you are getting pushback for trying to thoughtfully render hair or trying to create more different, like, you know, various styles, uh, trying to get better representation in general, and you're getting pushback, um, I think it takes a lot of energy, which is unfortunate, but this is something that we just automatically have to take on this extra burden as uh, being, you know, a minority in the industry. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you have to stress that importance and also find your allies and find the people who are willing to fight with you as well. Because sometimes it can be really hard to just be one voice in a sea of people who don't look like you, but find the ones who are also going to advocate and uh, kind of help you, especially if they're in more senior positions than you, if you're more junior. Um, but if you become more senior and once you become a manager, uh, you know, I feel like I take it as my personal responsibility to make sure that people are aware and people are educated. Um, not everybody's going to take that responsibility. I know that it's a lot of energy, but if you have the, the space and time to do it, uh, then please educate your peers about why it's important and why, um, you know, they, they should be thinking about this and where the resources are. Because again, there's infinite resources online that can guide you to the right uh, way of rendering uh, black hair, rendering dark skin, um, you know, getting different styles. Uh, I have tons of Pinterest boards dedicated to different lock styles and natural styles and uh, braid styles and, um, you know, different haircuts and fades. And, you know, there's, there's so much, again, innovation is key, right? And, uh, you know, just like be creative and make sure that it fits with your game, but also, um, you know, make sure that your game is made to fit it too, because there's no reason why a game should not be inclusive of our styles and the way that our hair grows out of our scalp. So, um, you know, make sure that you keep fighting that good fight, uh, just like we all have been, if you have the energy, but do take breaks, do rest and, uh, you know, also recharge your own mental health because uh, as important that this, fight, that this fight is, it's very, very taxing on us to have to do it every single day. So be, be kind to yourself, be gracious to yourself and, uh, and find your friends because again, we're out here and this is a community. Um, so, that is it. Thank y'all so much for dropping all this knowledge for this expo. Um, I had a really good time having this talk and I learned a lot from y'all. Um, so seriously, thank y'all uh, for doing this. And thank you, Game Devs of Color Expo, for having us here. We will talk to you later. Bye. Be blessed and moisturized. Yes. <laughs> Peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs> Peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs> Thank you so much to our panelists for that lovely discussion on rendering black hair in games. Uh, as for everyone else, if you feel like the knowledge could be useful, 
definitely encourage you to share it, drop it on the Twitters, use our hashtag DDOC Expo and spread that information.